Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're building a Pentium 4 reverse sleeper. The concept is taking an old computer like a Pentium 4 and putting it into a modern computer case, mixing old and new, so to speak. Big thank you to BitPhoenix for sending us a case for this project. It is the BitPhoenix Nova TG with tempered glass. So the idea is to have a step-by-step -step build guide and I will spend some time talking about the components. We're gonna start with the motherboard. So this is the motherboard we're using. It is the Abit IC7. Really good motherboard for the Pentium 4 socket 478 with the Intel 875 chipset. We've got DDR dual channel memory, AGP Pro, but we're only use, gonna use a AGP video card, five PCI slots, SATA, ID, floppy, it's all there. The Northbridge cooler was in bad shape, so I got one of these aftermarket heat sinks of eBay. With the processor, we've got a wide range of options. I really like the ones with the Northwood core. This chip runs at 3.4 gigahertz. It's got an 800 megahertz FSB and 512 kilobytes of level two cache. And the way you install them, there's a little triangle here and there's a triangle also on the socket. And you just line it up that way and just push it in. And there you go. Now we all know the Pentium 4 CPUs like to run a little bit hot. So you need a decent cooler. This is one of my favorite. It is one of the Sunflower type coolers from Salman. The model number is CNPS 7700, the all copper version. Very heavy, weighs around a kilogram, but has awesome cooling performance. Okay, before installing the CPU cooler, we're gonna add some RAM. This motherboard supports dual channel DDR memory. So one stick goes into this dark blue slot over here. This one is DIM1, needs a bit of force and the other one goes into this dark blue slot over here for the second channel, there we go. And we ran into our first roadblock. The Northbridge cooler is a little bit too tall for the CPU cooler to actually fit. So we're gonna remove that fan and I might have to come up with another uh, getaway of installing that fan somewhere else. But for the time being, we're just gonna remove the fan and install the CPU cooler. I just had a quick look and it seems like the Salmon cooler will basically blow some air on top of the Northbridge cooler so we shouldn't have any issues. So next up we're gonna clean the surface of the Pentium just with some isopropyl alcohol and then we're ready to apply some thermal paste and mount the cooler. And that's all done, now we're just gonna hook up the fan and we're good to go. I guess now is the time to check out this case. And here we go, a first look at the case we're gonna use today. So to begin with, we're gonna remove all the side panels. This side is made out of tempered glass, which is nice. So let's just remove this carefully. We're also gonna remove the other side. This is just gonna make cable management and installing everything just a little bit easier. We will also remove the front panel. This one requires a bit of brute force. You basically need to pull down here and rip it off. This is the IO shield. Always make sure this is included when you're buying a motherboard second hand and you've got to insert this before you put in the motherboard. Before we can install the motherboard, we just gotta add a few more standoffs, which are included uh, with the case. So that looks pretty nice, I just gotta screw it in. I also routed the uh, CPU connector uh, in advance. It's a modular cable. This just makes cable management a little bit easier if you do it now. Okay, next up we're gonna install the optical drive. There is a quick release on this side and there's another one on the other side, so it's really straightforward and then we just slot in the optical drive like that. I went with a black one, so that should be uh, giving us a nice contrast with the uh, white front panel. I'm not gonna secure them just now, I have to adjust the uh, correct position once I put in the front panel. We're gonna use a Western Digital 500 gigabyte uh, Kavia black hard drive, this is a SATA hard drive. The hard drive is really easy to install, you just pull out this drive frame and then slot in the uh, drive like that. And you put it back in the drive cage, that's it. I've just installed the power supply. This is total overkill, but it's the only fully modular power supply I've got because this case doesn't have a shroud here. So I wanna keep it nice, neat and clean. Um, 
I had to flip it around because the 8-pin CPU cable is a little bit too short to make it all the way. Uh, usually uh, I'll put it the other way around with the fan pointing down. Next up we've got the graphics card and this is a real classic. This is the NVIDIA 6800 GT. We're also going to add a sound card. This is a Sound Blaster X5. I believe this is the Extreme Music. Supports EAX, CMSS, 3D and all that good stuff. And here we got to look at the finished Pentium 4 reverse sleeper. So next up I'm going to get a monitor, hook it all up and we're going to do a smoke test making sure that it actually works. Okay, here we go. Let's turn it on. So that's all powering up nicely. We should get a post beep any moment. There we go. The LED lights also work. I've got the power LED as well as the hard drive LED. So the processor is getting detected. Pentium 4 3.4 gigahertz with hyper threading. We've got 2 gigs of RAM. And it should also pick up the hard drives very soon. I had to swap out the hard drive, the uh, 500 gig black didn't get picked up, so we're using a 160 gigabyte from also from Western Digital and that's working fine. And I'm booting off the optical drive now, it is the Windows XP Service Pack 3 installation CD, so I'm going to install Windows, the drivers of course, some benchmarks, some games, and we're going to check out what this machine can do. Everything is now installed and here we are taking a look at the specifications of the system. I did run into two small issues. At first the Nvidia graphics card wouldn't work properly. We had limited resolutions and colors available and we got an error telling us that not enough resources are available. It turns out that a BIOS setting needed changing, lowering the AGP aperture size fixed the issue. I also ran into issues with the X-File card. It turned out this is a Dell OEM version and even the Daniel Case drivers wouldn't work. So I just swapped the card uh, rather than spend too much time trying to fix it. We will check out some games next, but before that, let's have a look at some 3D Mark results. I used the latest NVIDIA driver for the 6800 GT directly from their website. In 3D Mark 2001, we're getting 18,870. In 03, 10,780. And in 05, we're getting 4,388. But now it's time to check out some games. I've got MSI Afterburner running, telling us the frame rate, but it wouldn't display in every game. Does it run Crisis? Actually, it does, and quite well, to be honest. We're running at 1024 by 768, and yes, the details are all set to low, but we are getting smooth frame rates, and at least the beginning of the game is quite playable. You can give up some FPS for higher detail settings if you like, but either way, it's quite impressive seeing this game run well on this Pentium 4. Next up is a real classic, Battlefield 2. I sunk so much time into this game. A bit of a story. I was one of the pizza noobs. Here in Australia, Pizza Hut had this promotion, buy some pizzas and get a free game. They had Battlefield and some other games that I don't remember. Well, that did it for me. I love pizza and I always wanted to check out Battlefield 2. So us pizza noobs, we flooded the servers and of course we got totally smashed by the established players, but that's just how it was. And I stuck with the game for a very long time, only moving on to uh, Battlefield 2142 when it came out. The next game we have is Colin McRae Rally 2. It blocks the MSI Afterburner overlay, but it seems to be running quite well. It runs at 1024 by 768 with all the details maxed out and it feels responsive and quite smooth. Doom 3 is a great game that fits well with the Pentium 4. The 6800 GT was basically made for Doom 3 when it came out. It was one of the top cards to have for this game. The game engine is capped at 60 FPS, but I ran the built-in benchmark utility and we're getting an average FPS of 54.1. We're running at 1024 by 768 with medium details. Halo is next. Here I'm just cruising around and we're getting good frame rates. We're running at 1024 by 768 with all the details maxed out. This is a great LAN game if you ever get the chance. It's lots of fun and it runs fine even on Intel shared graphics if that's all you got. Need for Speed Underground. This game looks absolutely gorgeous but it is still quite demanding. 
It does struggle to stay above 60 FPS quite often to be honest, but it's definitely playable and if you lower a few details here and there, you should be able to make it run even better. And the last game we're looking at is Half-Life 2. This is the final version directly from Steam and while it runs a little bit slower than the original release, the Pentium 4 with the 6800 GT still provide a decent experience. All the details are maxed out, but there's no anti-aliasing, so you can improve the performance a little bit if you like by lowering some of the details. So let's wrap up this video. It was a pretty smooth build. We just ran into a few small roadblocks with the chipset cooler. We had to change a bar setting for the video card and I had to swap out the sound card because uh, unfortunately I picked up the Dell OEM version. I really liked how it turned out. The machine looks modern but stylish and not too gimmicky with lots of RGB lights like some of the modern cases have. The Bit Phoenix Nova TG was easy to work with. It looks nice and I like that it still has a drive bay for an optical drive. I was unable unfortunately to use the USB ports in this project because they only support USB 3.0 but I believe you can get adapters for this although they weren't included. The performance of this machine in general was quite decent but in quite a few games you kind of wish for more speed. Now there are faster AGP video cards out there but they aren't cheap or easy to find. So if you want an even faster Pentium 4 I would go straight with a PCI Express system but that's for another video. So there you have it guys, the Pentium 4 reverse sleeper, putting a Pentium 4 retro gaming PC into a modern case and looking good. Let me know down below in the comment section what do you think about this project. And as always, all the usual YouTube stuff, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Hit that notification bell so you get all the updates. Like, dislike, share the video and that's it. I shall see you soon with another one.